welcome back to the new studio. If you're new, I'm Slu. We are standing in the new studio. This is episode three of Building the Art Studio. Get caught up, watch episode one and two. I don't think you'll wanna miss it, but it's exciting. We have so much to do if you've been following along. I just moved everything in. It's still a mess in a disastrous bundle of everything. I'm slowly trying to move things around, build things out. That's what we're doing today's episode. Really excited, I'm like the most excited about this. We are customizing and building out the painting corner. This is probably where I'll spend most of my time besides behind the computer editing, but actually painting, you know? This is a functional art studio for myself, partly, and so we wanna make it functional. So I have a lot of ideas for the painting studio that we'll go into in detail. I've looked at other artist studio in real life. I've you know, sought advice from Andrew Tischler, other artists on YouTube, things that they like in their studio space that really helps and I want to incorporate these aspects and anyways, a big puzzle to begin. But I'm going to start with spackling this wall and the wall around and then I'm going to paint some just to get it organized. So I need to move a lot of this stuff. So much work, but well, let's begin. So you may be asking, why gray? Why would you paint this wall gray? Well, there's a few reasons. One, it's kind of nice to mix it up with the white, but also it's like what we're gonna custom make a palette. And you know, when you paint on a palette, I like to have like a cool neutral gray so that it's kind of a middle value. And that's like the, a very general and you know, well-received theme within painting is kind of working from the middle, you know, toning your canvas before you paint to get rid of white some sort of neutral color in the middle of you know black and white, a neutral gray. So not only having my palette that's gonna be like a neutral gray where I actually load paint and mix paint, but the, the background where the canvas rests, I thought that would be kind of nice to also just make a, a neutral gray color. So that's kind of part of the plan. So like the main focus of this area is obviously functionality to be able to paint and use it, but you know, lighting is very important. You know, the, the palette where you mix your paint, it's kind of like the mini factory, where the actual canvas sits and lives, you know, where you're approaching and being involved with the actual material. So there's all these things that are going down, sections that I'm trying to finesse. So this gray background is sort of within that theme of neutral gray working from the middle. Took longer than I thought. This is a bigger wall than I thought. And it's a new day. You could tell I'm being dominated by allergies. I'm sounding extra nasally. But my buddy Sam came in. He helped me hang some paintings you saw on those hyperlapses, which I finally got my slider to work. It's wonderful and delicious, but we got a lot of good work done. All those paintings also, uh, we kind of set up the podcasting room, including some curtains, some paintings, this big light. Still a lot of work to do to get that set up, but just good work. I needed some extra hands, and you could see also, we still got so much junk, crap everywhere, so much work to do, but we're gonna continue on the painting area, setting that up, but before that, we gotta talk about the sponsor of today's video that helped me make these videos and pay for rent, 
The sponsor is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes ranging from all sorts of creative genres like entrepreneurship, photo, video, business, social media, and it's taught by the leading professionals in all of those disciplines. Their whole user interface, their website, class, structure, assignments, it's all really curated to learn. Whether you're a career professional or you're a new hobbyist, at home trying to get your foot in the door to a new creative endeavor. You know, Skillshare's classes are designed for every sort of person. I personally have used Skillshare in the past to improve my photo and editing skills, but something more applicable to fine arts, a great class that they offer by the homie Jazza, Mastering Illustration, a really great curriculum course, everything to do with color theory and kind of the fundamentals of illustration. I don't take many sponsors on the channel. Skillshare is a great one because I think it's really applicable to the people watching my videos. So the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. It's a really great opportunity. I really appreciate the sponsorships. You know, it really helps creators like me, YouTubers, you know, continue to make content like this for free. You know what I mean? So check out Skillshare. Thanks for sponsoring the video. Let's continue building. So French cleats, big deal right here. Before I actually moved out of my old studio, there was another tenant in the building who had a wood shop. So I had him rip these seven foot two by ones or four by ones, I forgot, of poplar into 45 degree angles um, to make French cleats. If you don't know what a French cleat is, basically you permanently attach a 45 degree angle um, facing outward and then you have kind of like other pieces of the opposite 45 degree angle to hang things on. Um, it's not that complicated, it's really simple. Actually, Andrew Tischler inspired me to do it. He has an awesome video on his uh, studio um, tour, a studio tour video, and so you can go check that out. And it's really great, saves a lot of space, really sturdy and simple, easy. So basically what I have to do is uh, countersink some holes. I need to find the studs in the wall and just you know, do 10, six inches apart, drill them into the wall, and um, that will kind of be the painted setup where everything will be painted upon. It's really exciting, I'm really excited. Right, this is my last one. Ugh. Use the spacer to make it even throughout the whole thing. Ay ay ay. Wow. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight six inch, a little over six inch spacers of French cleats. Now, I have two wooden things left over. Can you see that? Which means I could have actually gone a smaller size in between the gaps, which means I would only have more options if I wanted to move the canvas slightly in between this length. It's fine, I could redo it for now, we're gonna leave it. I'm gonna sand the top of these things, um, kind of the connection point, you don't want them too sharp because they'll be coming in and out. And then we'll paint it gray and I'll demonstrate how they work. But it's looking pretty sexy if I move this. It's totally looking like a painting setup. And also the height of this is only if I have, you know, like the King Arthur out, uh, King Arthur painting I did where it was really tall, you would hang it on that one and then the feet would be right here instead of painting on the ground. So major, like the majority of time painting, they'll probably be hung on like these four, um, but you know, you just wanna have that just in case you do work on big canvases, which I really wanna do. And now we paint. This place is so messy, but I like that. You gotta make a mess to get work done. This is my favorite tool, the paint opener. It's just kind of dope. Always have loved this little guy. 
Allergies are killing me. This is a disaster waiting to happen. <sighs> Got this gray I mixed before for the wall, so it's the exact color. And obviously, that's what these little beams, French cleats, are going to be. And just like that, we're good to goose. Kind of looks nice, all blended in. Very simple. But now let me show you how this works. I think these down here are dry. Okay. Countersink two holes on this little piece, which is the exact same thing as these big pieces. I just had extra. So it was cut at a 45 degree angle, so you get two of those pieces. This is just an extra one. What canvas should we use to demonstrate? I'm just going to use this as an example. I have this little piece. I'm going to attach it right here to the wood. I'm going to screw it in. And so now, like, let's pretend this is a brand new canvas that I want to paint. Now I have the option of sliding this into any of these slots. Do you see what I'm saying? Let's bring this closer. And so that's the wonderful joys. This would be good for standing. Maybe I want it a little higher. I'll go up one, you know? It's on there really solid. It's not going anywhere. Painting right here. Maybe if I wanted to sit down, you know, for some oil paintings, I'll bring it to the lowest one or the second lowest. You know, now I'm painting right here. And you can mix and match however you want. Something else that is interesting, you know, you know, sometimes I'm not always painting on canvas, so I attached, you know, right, this 45 degree tooth that latches on to this opposite facing 45 degree tooth. And now I actually have this easel on the wall with no legs and I can paint on loose leaf paper. You know, I could have this over here while I paint with this, you know, canvas. It's just, oh, I took that off. Duh. But, <laughs> you know, it's versatile and it's really awesome, saves a lot of space. Now I just have this perfect flat wall for painting extremely perpendicular. Um, it's really awesome. I'm like so happy. I've been kind of dreaming about a setup like this in the last studio. It was just cords everywhere, modular, moving everything around, which was great, which worked. But this is, uh, this is really great and exciting and really large. And you can hang huge canvases and that's what we're going to do. But that is only one of the super important aspects of this painting corner and setup. The other extremely important aspect is light. All right, I got to test something. These are the soft boxes I'm using. I connected them with this pole, you can see, where they go in for the actual light stand. But I got to work with this big pipe that's right here, so. I gotta see. So what I'm trying to do right now is attach this, this contraption that again, Jerry Rig City, it's gonna hang like this and then that pipe that I showed will hang in these hooks. Will that work? I don't know. I just had to drill through some metal. The whole ceiling has this like metal sheet on the roof. I need some big screws like these. <clears throat> oh, that ain't going nowhere. Whoo! Wow. But will it be the right direction? And I, I haven't even turned the lights on. This is just the hanging procedure. So, the question is, is this good light? How's the camera look? All right, so, it looks kind of weird. I need to change the temperature of these. Uh, 
That's not that good, huh? I mean, it just doesn't look like there's much light on anything. If I turn this light on, it obviously brings back more. How much light am I losing here when I turn this off? Okay, so a solid amount. But those aren't that bright. Let's trade. I'm bagging that idea. Complete audible. I just spent like an hour researching lighting setups online. Steven Bauman, Stan Prokopinko have these wonderful setup, setups with LED lights, two by four foot, that kind of tilt down. They're way more elegant, they're thinner. So I'm gonna spend a little more money to do that in a few weeks, get an electrician in, because this is a really important part of the studio, if not the most, that's gonna be where I'm spending the most amount of time. So a lot of this whole setup is very janky and jerry-rigged, and it's functional and it works. This was just a little too far past jerry-rigging and not super functional. It wasn't great. So we'll just wait on that and we're gonna completely move on. I'll show you that. Um, make a little clip of video when that comes in. I don't know, two weeks, who knows. Palette, we're switching to the palette. Now, I had this bar cart in my old studio and I also painted for the last two, three years on a glass palette that was smaller. Where is it? So this, this glass palette, I know this is filled with stuff, so let me just take it out. Ooh, a bunch of good tools and goodies that I completely forgot about. So this is just like a glass palette. Uh, planes going by. And I painted it a middle gray underneath. You could buy them like this. Um, I did this by myself. It's pretty easy. A lot of people do this. It worked wonderful, but it's pretty small, you know? So what I'm going to upgrade to is this bigger piece of glass, which is an old piece from my table at home. It's quite big. It's quite thick. It's nice. And I'm going to attach it to the top of this bar cart with some epoxy, paint the underneath gray, um, add some custom shelves, and this will be like the super dope palette that will kind of have everything, way bigger space, it's higher off the ground to mix. I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be super straightforward, so let's begin. I'm just gonna flip this over. And I'm gonna use the same paint as the wall. I actually don't know how this paint's gonna stick to this glass, but we'll see. And I could sand it, but it's thick, so it's gonna be the other side. So it really, there's, there's no real reason why it shouldn't work out perfectly because I'm not painting on this side, I'll be painting on the other side. So we're gonna let that dry. All right. That's looking nice. I'm gonna flip this over. So I can do some alterations. So we're gonna countersink some holes so it looks nice. This piece of plywood is just a little rough, unlike this nicer piece of wood, so I'm just gonna sand it real, ooh. All that sawdust. Pretty snazzy. And this is gonna go like this. This is JB Weld. I'm just gonna put it all out because this was only half. Careful about that. Mix this up real good. Oh, this is like the first oil painting mixing on the palette, even though it's adhesive binder. This is just like a janky palette knife, but it's getting me excited to actually use this holy guacamole. Move that over here for the moment, because we're gonna go over here to build some shelves. Construction, is this boring to watch? This is like my favorite thing to do. 
Set it up, build it, baby. So, we put some more shelves up, got the materials. I want to talk about a few things. Lay it down real quick. It's been like a week since I've been working on this corner. A lot of great work. But there's something very important here that I want to talk about. Other people talk about in maker spaces. I've talked to other studio artists who've managed and operated out of studios. I've also, you know, owned and operated out of a studio for three plus years. So I, I know a little, but you know, you want to be able to access all the tools that you know services your function of your job as quickly and efficiently as possible. There's this thing called first order retrievability, meaning the tools you use the most should be able to, you should be able to retrieve the fastest. I'm not a woodworker or a fabricator, so I have actually less tools. Obviously, painting, you know, it's less tools, but still I use different arrangements of things, and everything is within one step to the left or one step to the right. It's wonderful. Surface area everywhere. Drawers are where tools go to die. So we got a bunch of desk space, surface area, shelves, shelves, surface area. Pallet came out great. Things hanging. Wonderful surface area. Even these shelves that is in disarray of tools. It's all out there for me to see visually. And nothing's going to get lost. Everything will be used. So that's wonderful. That was the main objective, you know, and that's what I think I achieved, the arrangement of shelves and spacing, that was kind of in the moment. But it worked out wonderful. Super excited. Uh, the lighting that I talked about is coming in a few weeks. Very important aspect of this whole painting setup, but that is something we'll have to do for another day. This table will eventually be closer. I'm also going to actually raise that um, five or six inches because I like things to be about 37, 38 inches. So you're not hunching over perfect size. Anyways, the laundry thing, the laundry list of things to do is endless. This was amazing. I actually did a lot of work. I'm super excited that I finished this by, by, to get this video out by this weekend, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff to do. So follow along. More shish kebabs I'm going to build and everything. I don't even know. There's so much podcast studio. I'm going to roll out. You know, this, this building, the studio vlog series will continue until I'm kind of done setting things up. And then that will kind of just transition to Sludio vlogs every week. Every week I'm going to have like just hang in the studio, whatever I'm working on, um, on top of the other big painting production projects. Um, actually, we did the first painting on a Patreon live stream. So check out Patreon if you want to support me and see live painting every week. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm rambling. I'm quite tired and there's so much to do, but it's super fun. So thanks for watching, really excited about this. I can't wait to actually use it. And the wonderful thing about you know, owning a studio is, or working in an environment is you work, you see what works, you see what doesn't, and then you change it to, to help you do that job even better. So maybe some of this setup won't really be super ideal. I don't know, I have to use it you know, for a while to figure that out. Alrighty, see you in the next video.